الرحمن الرحیم a very shameful and disgusting issue in islamic jurisprudence is called halala today we shall discuss the background of this issue and how it actually negates the spirit of the quran as well as its explicit directives now according to the islamic sharia when a husband divorces his wife for the third time he cannot marry her again of course when he divorces her for the first two times he has the the option of taking her back again within the iddat period however when he divorces his wife her his wife for the third time he cannot marry her again unless that lady is married to another person and then that person out of naturally arisen circumstances divorces that lady and only then will that lady become lawful for the first husband now in, in islamic jurisprudence certain subterfuges which are of course are very disgusting and shameful have been invented in which it is preplanned and people are particularly singled out and they are told that you can do halala with such and such a person and once this is done uh, once this marriage takes place that person has an understanding is made with that person that he will divorce this wife and then uh, this would be actually legalizing her for the first husband now th- what makes this uh, whole thing even more disgusting and even more shameful is the fact that our jurists impose a condition Uh, regarding the, this this particular issue and they say that this third this marriage uh, this divorce cannot take place by the uh, person who is married again unless of course he has had sexual intercourse with that lady in other words the whole subterfuge which comes to light is that if a person divorces his wife for the third time then it is planned that that lady will marry a certain other person who will have sexual intercourse with her and then he will divorce her so that she can become legally allowable for the first husband this of course is a very disgusting and shameful thing and if we study the sources in this regard we come to realize that it has especially the the second portion in which the uh, the restriction of sexual intercourse has been imposed as regards the first thing is concerned planning of such a marriage is concerned of course islam is does, does not know of any hoodwinking of the law it severely condemns in uh, the people who actually try to violate the spirit of the law by merely following it, its words now as far as the second condition is concerned in which it is made essential and incumbent that the husband the the, the person who shall marry uh, that lady shall marry after being divorced from the first person must have sexual intercourse with her is actually based on an erroneous conclusion or, uh, made on the basis of certain words said by the prophet these words actually were very subtle and they were meant to reprimand a lady who actually wanted her to divorce uh, from her husband fro- so that she could become allowable legally allowable for the first husband she came to the prophet and said that she wants divorce on the grounds that her husband is sexually impotent and she cannot he cannot copulate with her and on these grounds he demanded uh, she demanded divorce and on this basis of course then she would become uh, legalized for the first husband now that when the prophet called the her husband her husband said that she is absolutely lying and that he is uh, sexually able to satisfy her also now when the prophet saw the situation he actually reprimanded that lady in a very subtle uh, voice in a very subtle tone in a very subtle manner and he and he actually said that she will not uh, she can only marry the first husband unless and until she is actually taste able to taste the her 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 present husband which of course in her own opinion she cannot since she thinks that he is sexually impotent so the issue of the fact is that the prophet was actually reprimanding her and telling her that she, you cannot go back to the to, to the first husband in actual matter of fact his whole sentence only meant to convey this fact that she will not be able to go to the first husband because the basis on which she was demanding the divorce was unfounded and the fact that his hus- her husband was absolutely not sexually Im- impotent as she she said and since the words said by the prophet were that you can only now go back to your first husband when you are able to taste your hu- for this, this the present husband which of course were imp- was impossible because in the opinion of that particular lady she was uh, he was sexually impotent so i now read out that actual the narrative before you so that the words become even more clear and words which were said in a very subtle tone and in order to reprimand that lady were unfortunately be understood as if they were imposing a condition this narrative has been recorded in bukhari and i'll just read out the translation to you it says that ikrama narrates that rafa divorced his wife thereafter she married abdur rahman ibn zubair qurzi aisha says that she came to her wearing a green cloak and complained of her husband and showed 
Aisha her bruises. Women do help one another. So when the Prophet came by, Aisha said, I have only seen Muslim women being treated in such a way. Uh, her skin is greener than her cloak. Ikrama says that when her husband came to know that she had complained to the Prophet, he also came over to the Prophet along with his two sons from his wife. Upon seeing her husband, she got hold of the, the end of her cloak, letting it hang from her head and remarked, My only complaint is that whatever he has is no more than this soft cloth. At this, Abdurrahman said, O Prophet of Allah, she has told a lie. I am very strong and can satisfy her. The truth of the matter is that she is disobedient and wants to go back to Rafa. When the Prophet heard this, he said, If this is the case, then you shall not be permissible for Rafa unless Abdurrahman tastes you. Then upon seeing the sons of Abdurrahman, the Prophet remarked, Are these your sons? When he replied in the, in the affirmative, the Prophet said, Do you tell such lies, O Abdurrahman's wife? By God, these young boys resemble Abdurrahman more than a crow resembles another crow. So it is absolutely evident from this narrative that the lady was lying regarding his, his, her husband's ability to copulate with her and she actually wanted to go back to her husband by telling this lie. So the Prophet reprimanded her in very subtle words and said, now you can only go back after tasting your husband, which of course in her opinion she would not able to do so because she thought that he was sexually impotent. And this was actually a statement of impossibility or in the words of, uh, of in, in technical terms, which you call it a istihala, something which, which is impossible uh, on the part of uh, some, someone to do. So therefore it is absolutely clear that there is no such restriction that when a person is, uh, divorces her wife, his wife and then she marries someone else, then it is no restriction or there is no condition that the couple must have sexual intercourse with each other before they divorce. أقول لك ولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات